Hello, one and all, it is this guy. And yet, we're gonna do. I'm not gonna do all my videos with me pointing at a screen playing a video game now. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna do a little bit more of, you know, up in your face personal stuff, like, you know, this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, today. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat still kinda hurts. We're gonna go over the Grammys 2018 and, um. You know, just go through how horrible it was, because it, let's be honest with you, it was terrible. I mean, there's a reason why the Grammys suck in television ratings right now. It's because um, they screwed over Metallica last year by uh, not only getting rid of their head mixer, but the, the guy who's mixed their music since the 80s, since the band's inception, and screwed with their speakers resulting in James Hetfield not being able to sing for the first couple of minutes, for, for the first couple of seconds of the Grammys last year. Anti-heavy metal. Of course, that probably feeds into the Metallica thing. We can get into that one later. I can do that one in a separate video. That's not all what this is going to be about, though, even though I do love Metallica. Rampant political virtue signaling. And bad people giving good awards because... Mm. But yeah, so, um, yeah, the, it was just bad, man, there's just, just so many ways I could explain as to why, but we're going to start with the biggest gem of the night, it was probably the worst thing ever, it was the Hillary Clinton did probably the dumbest, The dumbest thing uh, any political person has ever done at the Grammys. She read Michael Wolf's Fire and Fury in front of the crowd. Like she, well, not in front of the crowd. She was. It was a bit. It was pre-taped. Kind of like how Dale Jr. did a pre-taping thing for the Super Bowl. By the way, if you watch the Super Bowl, you leave me your thoughts on that. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was just like, ugh. I'm just like, it's just, it's just a stupid cameo. I mean, that book is, it was just a, it was just a mess. I mean, that book was basically just a Steve Bannon story about the whole freaking White House. Most of it's unverified, untrue, and top that off, Nikki Haley has been basically referenced in the book that she was, you know, having an affair with Donald Trump, and I'm like, Where's your evidence? I'm just like getting nothing because uh, you know Michael Wolf is a trash trash writer and is very good at finding nothing nothing to really build on except rumors and in this case having to be spread by Steve Bannon who is trash. So let me find that damn video. Why is Cardi B here? Oh. Okay. I'm just gonna show it to you. This looks... This looks bad. Trump won't read anything. He gets up halfway through meetings with world leaders because he is bored. Share? The color was a product called Ugh. Just for Men. The longer it was left on, the darker it got. Impatience resulted in Trump's orange blonde hair color. What the fuck? Snoop Dogg, come on. on. He started to get angry and hurt. The stars were determined to embarrass him. Um, that's true, though. I'm pretty sure that's true. I mean, I think that's what half of social media, you know, all these pop stars here at the Grammys all want to do. They just want to jump on Trump's ass. I guarantee you, if a bunch of celebrities were going after Obama this way, the media would be not would be really getting after him. And most of their fans would abandon them. But now that they're doing it, to a political opponent, oh, it's okay. It's okay. 
You read from a trash book where most of it is basically unverified. Alright, basically as read by Steve Bannon. It should be on the title, okay? And top that off, my wolf got kicked off of Mika Brzezinski's show, Mika, Mika Brzezinski's show on MSNBC, you know, Morning Joe. She got kicked off, he, my wolf got kicked off the set because it was, she had finally gotten tired of his bullshit over the whole Nikki Haley stuff for some reason. I gotta show you that video, I might, if I remember, but, I mean. Come on, guys. I know you're comedians, I know you have nuts for brains, but I mean, come on, this is a new low. I definitely want to be cards. Smoking what, Cardi B? If Trump was not having his 6.30 dinner with Steve Bannon, then more to his liking, he was in bed by that time with a cheeseburger. Steve Bannon. You do realize Steve Bannon was marginalized most of his time as his chief strategist, right? I, I'm telling you, these guys do not know how to verify anything. I mean, I'm, I'm just dumbfounded at how politically unsound they are and how bad their logic is to everything. Why am I even reading this sh I can't believe Yeah, same! I can't believe that he really... This how he lives his life? That is, that is not how it li Are you a moron? Really? Okay, most of everybody says this book is trash. Okay? If you want to listen, take it from somebody intellectually honest that's on the left, go listen to Take Chapter. Jake, Jake Tapper. Alright, because he called out a lot of people on CNN for say, saying that while a lot of this was bullcrap, they said that we should look at it anyway because, you know, we're anti Trump. I mean, come on, dude. Tapper handled everybody on the left well on this. He actually fact-checked them, which is why I love Chris Tapper. He, he, calls stiff, he calls stuff like he sees. He's probably one of the most intellectually honest reporters I've ever seen from the left. And that's saying something. All right? I like Jake Tapper a lot. Because I think he's a reasonable guy. But, I mean... When you're not even listening to half your own people that's saying, Hey, this book is freaking dumb. And then you're going out and saying, oh, this is how Trump lives his life. And they're not even bothered trying to check it for themselves. They're just taking their word for it. Dude, even The View said that half of Michael Wolf's book is complete trash. Well, not half of it. One person on The View actually called out Michael Wolf for saying that his book is complete trash. So, I don't, I don't know what's going through the celebrity's mind. And come on, man. Why? Come on, man. Why are you? I was keeping staff from picking up a shirt from the floor. If my shirt is on the floor, it's because I want it on the floor. Another one. It's real best. It's DJ Khaled. Matter of fact, oh, this man. is the best spoken word album in the game. I'm fucking going with my friends. Oh, so this is going to work. Next. This is fucking dumb. Here comes Hillary. I want one of that. Stand by. Take one. Yep. He had a long time fear of being poisoned. One reason why he liked to eat at McDonald's. Nobody knew he was coming, <laughs> and the food was safely pre-made. That's it. We've got it. That's the one. Okay, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm fucking done with this. This is some bullshit. Okay, these people will not let Hillary go. They are so obsessed with Hillary. They are so obsessed with Hillary. And it is just nauseating how obsessed they are with her that they're willing to drag her from her woods in New York all the way up there to the Grammys to basically lecture us about Trump even though, you know, Benghazi, State Department abuses, classified email server, the new stuff about how she led a guy who was sexually abusing some of her female staff when she was working on her 2008 campaign as her spiritual advisor was doing that, all that stuff, and she let him stay on there. And all of a sudden, during Trump's State of the Union said, she decided, oh, well, I really regret that. And I'm like, I, I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. And, we're, and these are the moral voices of our time. These are the moral voices of our time. All right, and I haven't even gotten to the Jay-Z stuff yet. I mean... 
if you guys want to give, if you people want to give me an aneurysm, all you people today, if you really want to give me an aneurysm, this is a good way how. It really is, alright? I'm tired of, alright, I've argued with people over the topic of Jay-Z all day. The dude stabbed people. Credibly, he very well could be a pedo. Cheated with Beyonce a lot and has never been accounted for it, even by Beyonce. Has some of the worst and probably volatile lyrics I've ever seen from a lot of rappers. And, you know, fuck Trump, so let's bring him in. I cannot take Jay-Z seriously, alright? So I'm gonna... I'm gonna go find that clip of Jay-Z. So I'm just gonna look at Jay-Z versus Trump 2018. Yeah, well, it's gonna take me a minute. Alright, I just pulled a clip from Ben Show because he gives good commentary on it. which is just what America needs, I think, this fight between Jay-Z and the President of the United States. Uh, Jay-Z, who is, um, by virtually all accounts, it's amazing to me yeah. that Jay-Z is being held up as some sort of halcyon of decency. Okay, Jay-Z not only started off as a drug dealer, oh, yeah, but Jay-Z, in the very recent past, was in serious trouble because he was cheating on Beyonce, right? Wasn't that the story? Oh, yeah. the, the allegation, anyway, was that he was cheating on Beyonce. I think it was more than an allegation, considering that Solange was basically beating the crap out of him in the middle of the if I remember this correctly. Um, mm -hmm. But he is, uh, he, he got his, his career started by dealing drugs, and then I believe he was nearly convicted for stabbing a guy? Was that the, was that the idea? I don't want to get the, the legal allegation wrong, but uh, he was involved... Uh, in, in, in October 2001, he pled guilty to stabbing Lance Rivera at the Kit Kat Club in New York City in 1999. He was sentenced to three years probation. So he's a real class act, is this yeah. Jay-Z fellow. Uh, yeah. So Jay-Z is being held up as some sort of racial healer. And before all you people were going to flag this thing with dislikes, saying, Oh, but Trump said he, would, he could shoot a guy, and, you know, and he still can win the presidency. You're missing the point of why Trump won the presidency in the first place, okay? Right? There's a few underlying problems with the claim here. All right? Trump is coming up against Hillary Clinton, the most unpopular and worst candidate in history. He was using the anger and hate of t the Tea Party and the Republican Party and basically riding that wave. And three, Republicans were tired of being called racist, sexist, bigot, homophobes, and you hate the poor, blah, 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 blah. And they decided, you know what? If we're gonna get hit like that all the time, we may as well just elect a guy who's a fucking loudmouth. Okay, that's how a lot of people felt. Alright, some people did it because they had no choice. A lot of people did it because they had no choice, okay? But a lot of people also felt that conservatives were just getting pushed in the dirt because the mainstream media was out to get them. Obama was lecturing everybody on how to be a good person even though he was a terrible he, he was a terrible person anyway. And then they just felt that, and Trump just embodied that anger. That's how a lot of people have felt. They just felt that Trump embodied that anger. And not only that, he could defend himself by being a loudmouth. And that's what a lot of people was like. You know what? He'll actually go out and defend the portion of the country that is being ousted as racist, sexist, being homophobes, being the poor, with no evidence. And that's how a lot of people felt. I don't know. I don't know why people are just, <laughs> seriously, I'm just dumbfounded that they want to drag Jay-Z into the political field like he's some serious contender, even though the dude has stabbed a guy. I don't want to know why, and I, I, I said this during the time, alright, I'm not defending what Trump said about this shooting a guy on Fifth Avenue and still being able to win the presidency, okay, I, I do not like that comment when he said it, alright? Alright, if you've known me, if you've watched my channel at all over the past year, you will understand. I do. I was very fearful about Trump going going into 2017. Alright, when I started making my channel, it was literally after Trump won. Alright, and over the years, I've kind of built everything up through my FML videos. I just say, hey. Alright. I don't like Trump as a person. I think he's a loudmouth and he's a retard. He's not a retard, he's an asshole. But he will 
get through my policies, alright? You will get through policies that I generally like, that are at least pretty good in the grand scheme of things, and then, nope. At least he could do that. And that if he would keep his mouth shut, like he did at State of the Union, right after State of the Union, he did not tweet for a couple days, I don't know if he hasn't, I don't know if he's tweeted since then, he probably has, but if he could just keep his mouth shut, his approval rating would be sky high. Right? And I would have liked him much more during the primaries if he had kept his mouth shut. They said so many stupid things because, you know, he's embodying that, like I said, that he's embodying that anger that concerned him in the head for a while. So it's just a, it's a, it, it's, it's just a good Trump, bad Trump mentality, okay? Half the time, more than half the time, we get a center with them. We get a good Trump a lot, but then we get a bad Trump to mix in with it, and it mixes in the center Trump. If we can just keep Trump, Trump with more good instead of more bad to mix with it, instead of it being in the center, it could all be in the good. And I'd really like that to happen, but I mean, the, the dude, he's been a loud mouth for years, made a living on being a mouth, and I'm, bad, I'm loud mouth. But the idea that you're going to drag Jay-Z into this and make him this, you know, like the moral guide to being the president, and you know, oh, he acts much more presidential than Trump, and I'm just like, you're a moron. Are you guys moron? Are you guys morons? On, uh, on Van Jones' show. Oh, I like yeah. Van a lot, but Van's politics are utterly insane. Yeah, uh, Van's So here's Van Jones asking Jay-Z about how the world should go. He is somebody who's now saying, look, I'm growing, uh, I'm dropping black unemployment. Uh, black people are doing well under my administration. Um, and, uh, do, does he have a point that maybe the Democrats have been giving us good lip service but no jobs? Maybe he's done you know, say terrible things but put money. That's exactly what the Democrats have been doing for this past 70 years, is basically paying lip service in the black community and th never following through. I don't care if you elected the first black president. Okay, I don't care if y'all wanted, if y'all were the ones that were majorly supporting Barack Obama. Most of the black unemployment is in blue states. I'm sorry, okay. Most people on welfare are in blue states. They're from the black community, okay. Most of the violent crime rate that is caused by African Americans are in blue states. Alright. Blacks have been severely dependent on government too much. Alright, I don't think anyone should be dependent on government. But the Democrats basically have had African Americans in a fist since the 1960s. How they were able to take, you know, the winning issue for Republicans away from them in the 70s is really astounding to me. But this is how it's been going for years. And, you know, and they also, you know, call out, you know, black people who are at least somewhat conservative, like Ben Carson. You know, they would always call, they, a lot of people would call Ben Carson or Uncle Tom, like when he was going after Obama at that National Prayer Breakfast, for being, you know, a douchebag when it came to Obamacare, I, I felt that it was justified for him to say that, because he was a doctor. Like, he was still working as a doctor when he was invited at prayer breakfast, okay? A lot of doctors were getting screwed under Obamacare, okay? So many people were going after the man after that, it was like, I love Ben Carson. <laughs> You said what a lot of people wanted to say, right? Right? My mom's a nurse. I mean, she's been through some stuff with this whole, you know, Obamacare stuff in the past. Right? I'm telling you, a bunch of doctors actually met Obama in a room. And, you know, actual working doctors. Just met Obama in a room and told him, hey, Obamacare, Obama ain't, Obamacare ain't working. You need to fix something or, or we're all gonna lose our job. Right? We're not gonna be able to do what we want, what we need to do as doctors. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah. Black unemployment is dropping, but it's been dropping for a steady rate, okay? Like I said, Trump is allowed now. But, I mean, it's, he is doing well with black. I mean, if you would disregard the old whole bleep hole comments, you know, you disregard all of that, because we, we still don't know if he said that or not. If he said that, we, we still don't know, okay? And I'm going to say this again. If he really did say that he was a shit old country, and... Well, if he said Shady was a shithole country, I'm not as much on par as saying that he's not wrong. I would be more on par with him, with me saying that's just, that's inappropriate for the president to say. But if he had actually said that, why are you have so many Haitians coming through here because they're from a shithole country? That's a problem. 
Alright, if we're gonna blame anything, anyone for this destruction of Haiti, we're gonna blame this government. Alright, but Democrats don't wanna do that. They don't actually wanna hold governments responsible. They just wanna keep creating this massive, huge welfare state so that way they can get more votes. Same thing with the illegal immigration. Because it's not about money at the end of the day. Money is not doesn't equate to like happiness. It doesn't. It's, that's that's not missing the whole point. No shit. Okay, so he's saying that, that Trump's language is divisive. I actually agree that a lot of Trump's language is divisive. I've said so on the show. I've said I ripped him after the after the Charlottesville protests, for example. Uh, I, I ripped him after the after the bleep hole comments. I suggested that while some of that was somewhat defensible, it's really stupid. And uh, if the Haiti comments were right, then that was actually a serious problem. Yeah. Right? I, I've, I've, I've been on the same page as Jay Z actually on some of this stuff. But using Jay Z as sort of the model for for behavior, like who you are matters when you say this kind of stuff. So Trump, of yes. course, fires back. And here's what he has to say about Jay Z. He tweets this out: Somebody please inform Jay Z that because of my policies, black unemployment oh, crap, has just been reported so to be the lowest rate ever recorded. Okay, so to be fair to Jay-Z, that was actually in the question from Van Jones, right? Van mm -hmm. Jones says, Trump says that black unemployment rates are really low. What do you say? Mm -hmm. But Trump is right that black Americans are faring well economically under the under the Trump administration. It does go to the idea, by the way, that not everything that is not everything that is economic is is the extent of the presidential impact, right? I mean, what we yeah. say actually matters. It's one of the reasons I thought that Barack Obama was, was extraordinarily divisive, but Van Jones responds by saying America would be better off if Trump were more like Jay-Z. And you know, hip-hop is problem ever. all accusation and boasting. <laughs> he comes on confessional, and then the, but the politicians are all accusational and boasting of Donald Trump, and no confession from Donald Trump. So if you want to listen to what Jay-Z says, follow Jay-Z's model, Mr. President. He's what he struck. No. I, I'm sorry. Alright. You know why Jay-Z is coming up front about this? Because all celebrities want to do right now is virtue signal about Donald Trump. I'm sorry. So, but yeah, that's it's seriously all that they want to do. All celebrities want to do is virtue signal about Donald Trump because they think he's a racist, sexist, big, a motherfucking homophobe and don't know how to critically check their own freaking points because they're freaking idiots. Alright, that's basically it. Alright. They've been doing this for years, okay? They, they, they've literally been doing this for years, okay? These people tried to mop the floor with Ted Cruz. Alright? A guy who is, you know, whose dad was a Cuban immigrant. He was born in Canada. Alright? All these people would rip on Ted Cruz. Alright? Samantha Bee would always rip on Ted Cruz by saying, Not even God can stand Ted Cruz, and meh, 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 meh. Even though Ted Cruz is one of the, probably the, one of the greatest minds in the United States Senate right now. I, I'm just like really dumbfounded that we're going to all these celebrity side for political advice, even though they would make fun of people for it for literally no reason other than their differing, differing political ideo ideology than mine. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to bash them a lot. All right? Right? This is also another thing with Justin Trudeau. A lot of people, a lot of liberal comedians and or musicians in Canada, they would they would rip Stephen Harper up and down for because he was conservative. But even though Justin Trudeau has some of the worst policies known to man out of, out of the world stage, he has some of the worst policies known to man out of the free world. They propped him up because he was a pretty soy boy. Soy boy. And now they're all starting to make fun of him because, you know, he sucks as a prime minister. But they grew up Stephen Harper just because he was conservative. I'm like, your selective outrage is really shocking. It's really shocking and appalling. Alright, but now I'm going to go on to the last thing that, and probably the worst thing about the whole night, and it was the Me Too garbage. Alright, I'm sorry. The, the, the Me Too stuff is dead. Me Too has been dead ever since the celebrities hijacked it. And that started a long time ago, but they fully hijacked it when it, when it, when it was at the Oscars and the SAG Awards. Celebrities completely hijacked it. Like, any good that it once did, it was all gone. Alright. I know, I think it could still do some good, but with the celebrities basically taking the charge on it now, I mean, it's just, the entire thing's dead to me. 
Alright, because now it's just all being used. The virtue sticker will not actually do anything about the Hollywood sex scandal stuff. Or the sex scandal stuff that's going on in the music industry. They use it at the virtue signal so they can get some of their fans off their backs. Or some of their political friends off their backs. So that way they can, you know, go back to doing whatever they were doing before. Alright? Hollywood has never changed when it comes to sex stuff, okay? Hollywood has been a sex crazed place from the beginning. Okay, Shirley Temple was exposed when she was young. She was exposed by a producer or a writer or a director or something like that. Alright, the dude just exposed himself right in front of her, okay? The chick who played Dorothy, she was abused. She was ex sexually abused by some of the people who worked on her, worked with her on that. Alright. Alright, the music industry is just filled with the most sexual, violent, sexual and violently sexual stuff that you will ever see on the world stage. Oh, on the, in the entertainment industry. I mean, it's just bad. You know, you got, you got a lot of rappers especially saying, no, I'm gonna bang, uh, I'm gonna bang hoes, and then I'm gonna shoot that dude in the face, or I'm gonna chop Trump, uh, I'm gonna, or you're gonna do it like Snoop Dogg, and just, you know, get somebody to dress, get somebody dressed up in a Trump costume, and then shoot him in the face in a music video, he really did that. And they're just doing that, and just like, you really expect reasonable people, right? Even people in the center who might actually like your stuff to really believe you when it comes to this stuff. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I, I just can't take these people seriously. Right? Even if they're. Even if they've been through some stuff in the past, the way they handled it, it just. You know, it just killed the moment. It, it really did. It killed the moment. Right. Right. Especially Kesha because she makes this comment at one point. That, that she says, I hope you find your penis during a song. And I'm like, that was fucking unnecessary. Alright, and Kesha's been through some shit. She was sexually abused at one point, too. Alright. Alright, no, so, because I'm not, I'm not calling, I'm not going to go out victim blaming her, okay? I'm not. Alright. I feel sorry for what Kesha's been through. Through the sexual abuse stuff that's gone on and, you know music industry since forever just like in Hollywood forever but she does make a lot of sexually edifying lyrics when it comes to you know her music alright it's alright like I said it's just it's just really sad that so many people look up to these people's idols but at the same time they kind of promote the things that they're spouting out against Right, like he had a whole bunch of people giving these speeches down there at Grammys, you know, Time's Up, Me Too. Dude, here's something you can do that's productive. Call out the people who are doing the sexual abusing. Alright, man or woman, call them out in front of the entire world, right then and there. That'd be something you can get done. That's something really productive that you can do. Alright. And that's something almost no one has done basically ever, okay? Oprah did Oprah and Meryl Streep didn't do that at the Golden Globes. Like they didn't even call hard call out Harvey Weinstein by name. Alright, and as far as I know of, nobody was ever called out at the SAG Awards and no one was ever called out at the Grammys. Like no one literally said anything about a specific person other than Harvey Weinstein. If you got the right person, All right? These people basically marginalized Rose McGowan, who started the entire Me Too movement by herself. All right, I may think, all right, I think Rose McGowan is a little bit on the cuckoo side, but she has the right to be heard, and she was heard. But she wasn't even invited to the Oscars. All right, she was invited to the SAG Awards, but she didn't really get that much of a platform. Like, they would invite some people who were, you know, on this B2 bandwagon, but they would never invite the people who actually founded it. And if they did, they did they did a half-ass attempt in an interview. Alright, I'm telling you, the politicization of all of our entertainment, it's, it is furthering the divide of the entire country. Like, I'm sorry, like... Well, I'm not sorry. I, 
I'm sorry that it's happening, but I mean, it's just saddening that so many things like football, basketball, gaming even, all of that stuff, all the stuff that we could take as a pastime and say that we love to do because it was like, you know, it was just a, it's just a break from all the bullshit going on in the world. We can't even do that now because everything's just so fucking politicized. Okay, we, I know, alright? Everything's just so politicized to the point where I just feel like I just want to just take a whole bunch of games, talk, take a whole bunch of movies, take a whole bunch of CDs, and just go underground and live there until the, uh, until the nukes fall. Essentially, because, I mean, if, if Hollywood and the music industry, the movie industry, right, if, if they keep doing this mass politicization of everything, they're going to lose, basically, all of their fans, all of their money. They're going to lose all the things that, are, that would be able to keep them going in the long run. And it's all because they basically alienated more than half of their audience just because they wanted a virtue signal about Donald Trump. Alright, this is like, this is like I said, this is my problem with Steven Spielberg's The Post. Alright, I don't think that it's an actual, I don't think Steven, unlike what he usually does, I don't think that he was actually trying to present the Pentagon Papers in a historical light. I think he was actually trying to just paint the entire Washington Post as heroes, even though the Pentagon Papers weren't really effective for doing any type of blowback on Richard Nixon because he wasn't the one who started the Vietnam War anyway and they are just using this and there a lot of people were using this movie as an excuse to bash Trump and his supporters and I was like this is wrong alright this, this is revisionist history alright this is my also my entire thing with Cod World War II revisionist history political virtues are going at some points this is my entire problem with all of these things going on, alright? And they just. So many, many people just aren't. And there's, a, and there's a lot of people who are just being mindless sheeple when it comes to this stuff. And it's really. It's just. It's got me so annoyed that, honestly, I just feel like I wanna. I just wanna gas myself. I just wanna, you know. Just put me in a goddamn gas chamber, leave me be, just, just, I'm just, I'm sick, I'm just sick of how everything's become so divisive just because we happen to disagree on politics, okay? I, I, now, I'd like bipartisanship, I'd like to have good negotiations that would lead to areas of benefit for the country, but there's one side of the political aisle that just won't negotiate, and it's everyone on the left. Not, well, not everyone on the left. Unless you're, you know, a, rad a radical centrist or e even somewhat more leaning towards the center. Like, if you're a center guy or a guy who's more right-leaning than anything, then you are... Then you, you know, you're more likely to basically uh, get respect, in my opinion, because you actually want to you know, hear an open exchange of ideas, that's something that a lot of people just don't want to hear on the left, and it's just, <sighs> yeah, it just saddens me. Well, anyway, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this one, I uh, thought that guy was a little bit more co cohesive, well, I might not have been, I mean, if you didn't think I was, you know, leave some criticism down in the box down in the comment box and you know I'll be sure to get on it and anyway thank you guys hope you enjoyed now I'm gonna watch some Firefly